Hi guys, this is Craig White from Modern Milsim, and today we're going to talk about programming your Baofeng radios. Um, in this particular video, I'm going to be using a Baofeng UV82HP. However, the procedures that I'm showing in this video will be useful and will be applicable to all other Baofeng radios that use Chirp to program them. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do when you get your radio is to go ahead and plug it into your computer with the programming cable that you bought for it. Once you have done that, go ahead and click on the radio tab at the top and then download from radio. When you do that, you'll get a pop-up window here shortly. And when you get that pop-up window, it'll show the COM port where your radio is attached. It will also list the uh, maker of the radio, Baofeng, and which radio it is attempting to download the template from. If it this block next to model does not show your radio model, right click on the right and bring up the radio that does apply before you hit OK. Now in this case, that is my radio, so I hit OK, and it should start cloning. Now I have intentionally made sure that I would get an error message because I did turn not turn my radio on. Now, in this sense, most of the time when you have an error message, you can turn your radio back on or off and on and it will reset and function properly. Now, there are also other error messages that you can get in Chirp. If you get one of those messages, you can look that up on Mickler, M-I-K-L-O-R dot com and it will have answers to most of those error messages so that you can clear them and continue to use Chirp. So, while I'm sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and turn my radio back on. I'm going to go back up to the top and click on radio and then download from radio to get it cloning and transferring its template into the Chirp program. So, I'm going to click on OK. And now when you see the green block filling up under cloning, that means it's working. And once we get there in a few moments, we'll be able to work within the Chirp program to get your radio set. And here we go. So now you see there's several different frequencies already on the radio. A lot of times the radios will come from Baofeng with different kinds of frequencies, none of which seems to make any sense to me, but they seem to have a lot on there. So to clear that off, basically what you want to do is click on the first frequency listed there, which is 15 in this case. Then scroll down to the last one, which is 54 in this case, shift click that, and then hit the delete key, and there you go. It has cleaned off all these frequencies you're not going to use. And this is important because you're going to be transferring frequencies from the chirp image file, which I'll show you later in the video, and drop them into this part of the program so they can be uploaded into your radio. So you want this to be cleared up. So before we do that, though, there's a few other housekeeping details you want to do before you do mess with the memories and the frequencies. Go over to the tab on the left called Settings, click on it, and then there'll be seven sub-tabs under that. Dealing with the first tab, Basic Settings, there's a few things you want to make sure that are set. First one is Carrier Squelch Level. You want to make sure this one's probably about a three. If you have the squelch level too high or too low, it will do one of two things. Either you will not receive any transmissions of any kind, or even the most faint one that the radio can receive will come through. Next thing you want to look at is go down to the display mode for A and B. Both of those need to be listed as name in that space. If they're not, click on the right arrow tab and it'll give you an option. You do not want channel and you do not want frequency. You want name place there. Otherwise, the labels that will be entered with the frequencies under the memories tab will display the frequency instead of the label for them. And the other thing you want to make sure on this particular tab is make sure you do not have the Roger Beep box checked. I don't know about you, but it drives me insane to have a beep every time I make a transmission or receive one. Next, we're going to move down to the Advanced Settings tab. When you go to that, make sure you have the Vox Sensitivity marked it off. 
if you do not any voice any breathing anything will make you transmit and basically cause problems for anyone trying to monitor the net and you'll be hot micing the entire time you do want to make sure you check dual watch so that you can monitor two frequencies at the same time this is especially true if you're a leader in an operation because you not only will be monitoring channels from the upper command but will need to be able to transmit to lower command with any instructions or commands you do not need to uh, turn on the dual watch transmission priority and then as you go down through I always like to have the automatic key lock checked so that I won't inadvertently hit a number key and somehow change the frequency I'm working with or do something else to the radio that will be difficult to undo in the field. Finally, uh, there's not really much else below that particular section that you need to deal with. Go into the other settings tab. The main thing you want to look at here is the power on message one and two. That is the message that will pop up when you turn your radio on initially. Right now, mine has my initials and HP3, meaning it's the third HP radio from Baofeng I have in my inventory. Um, say if you're working for a, going to work and play at an op, you might want to change it by uh, putting the name of the op in there. In this case, I'm just going to use Op Stonebreaker. And since you've only got seven characters you can do, You're going to have to use an acronym for that and actually clean that up. Okay, so there you go. I've got on there Op Stonebreaker is going to be the initial message that comes on when you turn on the radio. There's nothing else there that you really need to mess with in that particular sub tab under other settings. Um, next, go down to work mode settings. Main thing on this was to make sure that the VFO MR mode is marked as channel. Make sure the keypad lock is checked. And then as you go down, you need to go all the way down to VFOA power and VFOB power. Both of those need to be marked as high and VFOA bandwidth and VFOB bandwidth need to be marked as wide. And why we want those wide instead of narrow is because you're more likely to pick up a frequency that is slightly off if you have it set on wide setting as opposed to narrow. You also want to go down to VFOA tuning step and VFOB tuning step and mark those as 2.5 in that block. This is the lowest step you can have for uh, tuning frequencies if you want to manually program them. So I always have them done that way. There's nothing that you really need to do with FM radio preset or the DTMF settings because the DTMF settings are basically showing the PTT identity codes. Don't need to worry about that. Finally, go down to service settings. When you get your radio from Baofeng, frequently there will not be any rhyme or reason to why the VHF and UHF squelches are set up. Um, in this particular case, the way I have done it is the VF, VHF and UHF squelch zeros are just that zero. Then starting with VHF or UHF squelch one, I start with 24 and then go up by five until I get to 64 for VHF squelch 9. Okay, so when you get all that done, you're essentially ready now to transfer the radio frequencies from an image file directly into the template from your radio. Now to get that template, we go up to file, we click on open, and to go to whatever folder you have your image file you're going to use, in this case it's going to be the Baofeng UF excuse me, UV82HP template example, click on it, and it'll bring it in as another tab at the top. Click on that tab, and there you have the frequencies that you want to cut or copy and paste into your radio. So we click on one, go down to 35, shift click there, right click on the selected area, hit copy or cut, I'm gonna use copy, then you go back to the radio template that you're using, click on the Memories tab on the left, click on one, right click, and then paste, and there you go. You've got your frequencies already dropped into the template for your radio, and on top of that, they are all labeled under the Names column. Now, once these 
frequencies are uploaded to your radio, they will show up on the screen when you get to them by the title or name as opposed to the actual frequency, so you don't have to remember them. So now that we've done that, we need to get these frequencies back into the radio. So we click on the radio tab and this time click on upload to radio. Make sure your radio is on. And then when the pop out window pops up in the middle here in just a moment, it will show the COM3 is still being the port and it should list your radio is UV82HP in this case, but whichever radio you're using. If it does not show that, you've got the wrong template that you're trying to upload to your radio and you could damage your radio if you do that. So make sure they match up with the radio you're trying to upload to. Mine is the same, so we click OK. And as you see, the green bar filling up for cloning, you, if you're looking at your radio, it'll have a light at the top, they'll be blinking at the same time. When it is done, it will bring up your opening message on your front of your radio. In this case, it'll be Op Stonebreaker, and you will know that it has properly uploaded the template back to the radio. Once that's done, you're ready to go and take your radio into the field. Just unplug it from the data cable, and you're ready to go. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to note them in the comment. I'll try to get back to you. Thank you very much.